are some people's brains more wired to appreciate music? There are some people who don't aren't moved by music, and then so some people are moved to tears when they go to the opera. Music is encoded in certain parts of the brain in terms of how we interpret it. Um, and musical ability actually can stay intact long after other cognitive capacities have gone in things like Alzheimer's disease, for example, which is really interesting. And, and that's because there's certain parts of the brain, particularly the subcortical parts, a part called the basal ganglia, which has to do with procedural memory, like riding a bike. And so even though other parts of the cortex are starting to degenerate and you're losing other functions, something like playing an instrument can stay intact for a very long time. And we're starting to see that. It's so moving. Like someone with advanced Alzheimer's could sit down and just play There is actually concerto? this, um, yeah. uh, uh, there's a movie that came out last year called Alive Inside um, that documented this uh, project called Music and Memory. I'm familiar with it because uh, my husband uh, was involved as one of the funders and producers of, both producers of the movie and funders of the project. Um, and what they did was um, they uh, went into nursing homes and provided uh, patients with Alzheimer and advanced dementia with iPods with personalized playlists from music of their youth. Mm -hmm. And these people put their headphones on and they immediately came alive. Uh, they were, they started recognizing ah. family members that are not recognized for a long time. They started talking when they had not been talking for a really long time. Oh my god! And it, it, it was not, it is a sort of almost, it, it's not a permanent change. It's, it's somewhat transient, but what is permanent seems to be a change in these people on, in the level of anxiety and the level of, uh, well-being in general. Well, I would say also it's it's engaging some of these subcortical areas that maybe have not been activated for a while, and they're connected to these other cortical areas. And so in a sense, I mean, people have done this with what we call deep brain stimulation. You can actually go in and put electrodes in that part of the brain. And for people who have been in a coma and activate it, and they can sort of wake up momentarily. And it's a similar thing as music is getting to these subcortical areas and activating them, and then sort of waking up the person, so to speak. It's so fundamental. It's it's yeah, it's a core to who we are, and and I think like as I was saying that it, it is evolutionarily speaking, that's how we transport information. It was so important for understanding and remembering music that it became well, at least for it became implicit over time. So uh, when you're talking about its role in in evolution and and how we learn to speak. You know, there's something about um, tones and tempo that is a way of communicating, right? So when we hear major tones and up-tempo, it makes us feel happy. And when we hear minor tones and slow tempo, you know, it, it brings a, a feeling of, of sadness. Is, does that have a basis in our brain? Yeah, so there's actually been studies done which show that cross-culturally, uh, music in major keys makes people feel more happy and in minor keys makes them feel sadder. And what's been shown is that it's similar to language. So the same kinds of sounds that are in the major keys are also involved when people are speaking and they're happy versus in minor keys is more like um, sad talk. And parts of the brain that are involved in encoding music are also involved in encoding language. So there's a lot of overlap there. So, I mean, that makes sense that the, the key that the music is played in is gonna relate to certain types of emotion that overlaps with our speech as well.